Good morning everybody. My name is Darlene and I have Parkinson's. I'm going to tell a little bit of a story today and I'm going to just tell you what we did today. Um, started off the morning. It was a very quiet morning this morning. I didn't do too much. Uh, got a couple things that I wanted to do around the house done. Not very much like I said. It was just a, a very quiet day. And then um, Claudine had made arrangements that she was going to watch the grandkids here. Um, so they love her there. She's Auntie Dean to them and they love her like you wouldn't believe. They come through the door and it's Auntie Dean, Auntie Dean and you know the the hoopla goes up and they have lots of fun. So anyway she was going to babysit them today so that meant that I would get a little visit with them as well and gave Cal and Ashley time to go out and maybe uh, do a little bit of something for their anniversary which was on Monday and uh, they, their whole household was not feeling well this week. And Cal has school that he had to attend to and um, Ashley had her hands full with watching the kids while she wasn't feeling well and the kids had sniffles and whatnot so now they're all feeling a bit better so this gave them a couple of hours to go out and just have a cup of coffee together and regroup. So that was good and so I'm going to include a couple of uh, videos and a picture of the kids uh, while they were over here. They, they are entertaining. They are so entertaining. Anyway, um, so that's what we did there, and then Claudine made sloppy joes for dinner, which were delicious. And um, and I was going to just tell you a little story. This story is from quite a while ago. Claudine was probably about 12 years old at the time, and uh, we wanted to go swimming one night. We lived up country in um, British Columbia, so we were in the Quinell area, and we wanted to go swimming, and it was dead of winter. And so I said, well, what we're going to do is we're going to take our pajamas with us. And when we get out of the pool, we're going to get dressed into our pajamas, Claudine. We'll just drive home in our pajamas and then we're ready for bed when we get home because we knew that we were going to stay until the pool closed. So that was fine. Bill was staying home. Clayton was just a baby at the time. So Bill was staying home with Cal and uh, Claudine and I went to the um, swimming pool. We swam to our heart's content. We got out of the pool when they said, okay, it's time for everybody to, go, to leave. So we got out of the pool, dressed in our pajamas. We knew it was very, very cold outside. And uh, so we, we said, well, let's just hurry quick to the car. So we hurried quick to the car. And no sooner had we hurried quick to the car till I realized that I had left the keys in the car when we got to the swimming pool. Now the swimming pool didn't have a lot around it. There was a McDonald's close by, which we could go to use a telephone, but there was nobody in the, in the swimming pool area anymore other than a few staff people and they couldn't see the outside doors. So nobody knew that we were stranded in this parking lot. It was freezing cold. And so I said to Claudine, we're gonna have to go and phone from the McDonald's to phone to dad to come and get us. So we went home and we phoned Bill and he said, I'll get the baby up and what not so it'll take me a few minutes to come and to get you because we lived out of town so he had to drive into town to get us and so I said okay that's that's great bring the extra key and we'll be good so I said to Claudine now we have to go back and be by the car because we don't know how long it's going to take him well I said to her we're going to be very very cold so let's put every extra piece of clothing that we have on us so that we're nice and warm so we had underwear on our head as well as a toque we had our underwear on and then a toque on top of that and we had socks inside of our mittens and so that we had double mittens on. We had, were bundled all the way up, pajamas, and then we had our jackets and scarves. And then I said to Claudine, we're going to have to do something to keep ourselves warm. So I said, let's leave a message for Dad in the snow here. So we used our feet and we trampled a message down. We, we drew a great big heart in the snow in the parking lot and we wrote, thanks for the rescue. We love you, Dad. And we put that all into this thing and it kept us warm while we were making it. Made it, it was giant, it was a giant thing. We never thought about the next day somebody was gonna come by and see it, but you know, we didn't care. But anyway, so when he pulled into the parking lot, he was a little astounded to find us wearing underwear on our head and socks on our hands, but we had managed to stay warm. And to this day, we laugh about that, we, we just, we cannot believe that we were silly enough to do that. But I said to her, I said, I didn't lock my keys in the car again for a long time because I, I realized in the dead cold that that could have been a disastrous situation if we'd had to walk very far to get to a telephone. 
would have been terrible. But anyway, I'm going to tell one other little quick story about in Quinell. It was very, very cold, like I said, in the winter times. And we lived out of town and we lived in a mobile home that had skirting around the bottom of it on a piece of property. We weren't in a mobile home park, we were on a piece of property. And uh, so Bill was at work and uh, he worked at the post office, but he also worked a security job for extra money at nighttime. So it was about two o'clock in the morning and he was getting home about three o'clock in the morning, but it was two o'clock in the morning and uh, I heard noises coming from outside and there shouldn't have been any noises. It should have been very, very quiet. So I went down the hall and I woke Claudine up quietly and I said to her, I said, now the baby's sound asleep. I said, let's go into the bathroom. We're gonna phone the police because there's a, a sound like somebody's breaking into the house. So we're gonna go into the bathroom area. We'll take the baby with us and we'll phone the police and we'll try to be safe in here. So we were terrified and we phoned the police and the police said, okay, well, I want you to go out and come out of the bathroom and turn on every light in your house. He said, we might scare the person away, but at least that's better than them actually breaking in. So we did exactly what they said and then they said they were on their way. So they came out. Well, when they came out, there had been a new snow. So they were able to track footprints in the snow pretty easy. And it turned out that there was a person who was living underneath our trailer to keep warm. They were, uh, they went, opened the skirting up and had gone under the trailer and were sleeping. They had the sleeping bag and a roll and everything underneath there. And the, the police officer said we were very lucky that he hadn't, you know, to, decided to make a little fire or put some charcoal or anything down to try and stay warm while he was down there because we, we'd have gone off in flames pretty quick. But anyway, the person never came back again. The, the, it had chased him off, you know, when he realized that the police had been called. So they took the bedroll and everything out from underneath the trailer and he never came back. But I never thought about how desperate that person must have felt, how cold they must have been to have thought that it was an okay situation to sleep underneath somebody's trailer. It was very frightening. But anyway, so that's my story for today. And I'm going to say that we'll hope you're all having a great day, a great weekend. And uh, tomorrow Sunday. I don't think we're doing anything too exciting on Sunday, but who knows what we'll get up to. We'll get up to something, I'm sure. Talk to you tomorrow. Have yourself a great day. Bye-bye. You want to be a little monkey jumping on the bed? No! What are you doing? Stop barking, that's right. Stop yeah. barking! No barking! Yeah. That's you. Whoa. No barking. You stacking them up? Knock, knock. Who's there? Knock, knock. Knock knock. Knock knock. Who's there?